Hello friends and welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson. I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church. I'm so happy you've joined us for worship this day as we continue our series on Almost Christmas based off a book of the same name. Make sure at this time to go ahead and grab your Bible and also your Grow resources. And those resources can be found in the QR code up on the screen or in the link in the description. Let us now begin to praise and worship together. Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Today, we light the candle of hope. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. On account of his vast mercy, he has given us new birth. You have been born anew into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. These are words from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 
As we light the candle of hope, we not only look to our own bright future, but also seek the well-being of our neighbors and even our enemies, bearing witness to a living hope that the one who lifts us up has come to redeem and restore the world. Let's pray together. Gracious God, you are the source of our hope and the one we hope for. May the hope we find in you surround us and lift us, driving out fear and inspiring us to love. And may this lively hope lead us into new birth through Jesus Christ. Amen. church. My name is Sarah Merriweather, and I'm the executive director here at Jerome. As we prepare to hear today's message, I want to invite you to connect with us during this time of our online worship together. During worship today, I invite you to use the chat or the comment function on any platform that you're watching on so that you can join in the conversation and share your thoughts or your prayer concerns with our staff and with our online worshiping congregation. I also invite you to connect to Church Center, which is our app and our online resource that virtually connects you to things like our Connect card, uh, signups for upcoming events, worship videos and resources, and our resources for kids and families, as well as our online giving platform so that you can support the ministries and missions of Jerome Church. You can scan the QR code that's on the screen to connect or visit us online at jeromechurch.org slash church dash center. Today is the second Sunday in the season of Advent, and we are continuing our new series called Almost Christmas as we are looking at the themes of peace, hope, joy, and love as we expectantly prepare our hearts for the celebration of Christmas. So let's hear today's Advent message from Pastor Bruce. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. So last week we began to talk about what it meant and what the difference was between an almost Christmas versus an altogether Christmas. And we noticed that there was a tension between the extremes. Like one extreme would be no Christmas at all, uh, no Savior being born, nothing to celebrate. Then you have almost Christmas somewhere in between and an altogether Christmas. And the almost Christmas looks and feels and sounds and smells like Christmas, but it's, it's not all together. It's like getting to the end of opening all your gifts under the tree or, or getting to the end of the evening of Christmas Day and going, is that it? It's almost Christmas, but it's not quite there, where we have an altogether Christmas where everything is perfect, uh, an altogether peace and an altogether hope and an altogether love and an altogether joy. And part of the reason we have this feeling about Christmas really is because we're living in what is often called the in-between times. The theological term is uh, parousia. Uh, It's that idea of the second coming. And so we're in this time where we are celebrating the birth of the Christ child, our Savior, Jesus Christ, yet we know he's going to come again. And so it's almost, it's an almost feeling. 
We also spent a few minutes talking about what it meant by an almost piece versus an altogether piece. And if you didn't hear that sermon, I invite you now to go back and listen to it. I also wanted to start today by talking about where did this idea come from, from the idea of almost versus altogether. And it actually comes from the founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley, and his sermon, The Almost Christmas. Back in uh, July 25th, 1741, he preached at St. Mary's Oxford before the university from the text of Acts 26, 28, and this is a King James Version. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You see, the theme of this sermon was the radical difference between a nominal or an almost Christian and a real Christian or an altogether Christian. Now, in his sermon, he actually talks about the high-minded hypocrite or the almost Christian who uh, does the right things, but life isn't really changed, versus this Wesley's new conception of the altogether Christian. And he actually, in the sermon, expressed his doubt that there are many of the altogether Christians attending Oxford at this time. I can imagine that John Wesley's feelings about this was a sense of hopelessness or distress that he was standing up and preaching this sermon. And that's actually a little bit of the topic today. What is it between a hopelessness, an almost hope, and an altogether hope? Now, hope is defined as a desire accompanied by expectation of our belief in fulfillment. Now, once again, there are tensions, there are extremes. On the one end, we have the altogether hope, and on the other end, a hopelessness or despair. We've probably all felt that sense of despair at some point. It may be uh, you've lost a job and you're not sure how you're going to support yourself or your family. The loss of a relationship through uh, breaking up or a divorce. Even the loss of a loved one to the passing of death. Then you have an almost hope. And this almost hope is actually defined as a, a hope for oneself. It's this kind of thing. I hope I get the gift I want on Christmas. I'm sure we've all had that kind of hope. Or maybe as I hope it snows on Christmas Day. There's nothing like a white Christmas. And if you don't like the white Christmas or you live down south where you don't get a whole lot of snow, it may be that I hope there's no school tomorrow or work tomorrow if it does snow. Believe it or not, I've actually seen both of these happen in a short order, personally. And of all places I saw it is while I was working at a scout camp in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. It was uh, Camp Liberty at Heritage Reservation, and I was working my first year as the quartermaster, which is a very powerful position. Guess what? You're in charge of tents, you're in charge of all the food, and you're in charge of the toilet paper. So very important position, a position of power. But, but that's not really where I saw the hope and despair, if that's what you're thinking. I actually saw it in the eyes of young first-year scouts who are first attending summer camp. You see, there's uh, a bit of hazing that I think that goes on in scouts. Uh, not, not, uh, not hazing in the sense of abuse, but uh, fun games that are kind of played, and everybody kind of goes through it. Um, for instance, uh, scouts were known to take, older scouts were known to take younger scouts on snipe hunts to look for, if you were in my part of Ohio at the time, uh, and I was a young scout, it would be for the full-breasted, red-feathered, northern, western Ohio snipe. You can look that up, and guess what? You won't find it. But I also remember going to summer camp and going to a scout jamborees where a bunch of different troops would gather together and somebody asked me to go find something like a left-handed smoke shifter or a right-handed smoke shifter or a sky hook or number nine green lantern oil and my personal favorite is a can of dehydrated water now when i worked as the uh the quartermaster that meant that's where scouts came looking for all the supplies if they needed tent stakes or they needed extra poles or things like that and one of the days as i was taking inventory before the summer started i found a skyhook it was actually a tent pole with made by the skyhook tent company and i set it aside knowing knowing that at some point a scout 
would probably be coming up and asking for a sky hook. And I began to think about it. And as I thought about it, I realized I could create some of these other things. So uh, these imaginary things that sometimes scouts get sent for. Uh, and so I, I made with a propeller and, and some, some rope and, and a nail and of course a, uh, a stick a left-handed smoke shifter that you'd hold in your left hand to shift the smoke the other direction. And when the scouts would take it and come back and say, no, this is a left-handed thing, these are right-handed, I'd tell them to switch hands. Uh, number nine, Green Lantern Oil, soap in a bag. And of course, one of my all-time favorites was a can of dehydrated water. See, after a couple weeks, I actually had a scoutmaster gift me an actual can, uh, a gag gift that was an actual can, a real label on it, of a can of dehydrated water, which the instructions I still remember to this day. Take, take one gallon of fresh water, dump contents of can into the fresh water to make one gallon of fresh water. I still have that can today at my house. Uh, it's one of those favorite items. But you see, something happened to those scouts I, because I remembered the hopelessness of the d distress I felt when I got sent out for these items and came back with nothing. I felt as if I failed because I didn't understand they weren't real. And I didn't want the scouts to feel the same way. And usually what happened is a scout would come up to me feeling dejected as I worked this quartermaster position because they had been to other troops asking and they said and they go I need this they said I had to come back with it and when I handed it to them their face changed from despair to hope an all together hope and it was really an amazing thing to see so what is an all together hope well, an altogether hope can be found in, in a passage from Scripture, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Hear these words. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what's happening in this, uh, this passage from 1 Peter? Well, in the first half of the first sentence, the verse he read, there's an adoration to God for five things that were where a Christian's altogether hope is found. The first one is adoration for his great mercy. By his great mercy, the mercy of God shone down upon us. The second is that he has given us a new birth. As a, in baptism, we die to our old sinful nature and rise again in Christ. We are made anew. And then we have into a living hope. And a living hope is something that is miraculous. The first thing is that it's alive. It's not dead. It means that it flows through us. The fourth thing is through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the fifth, the fifth thing we are giving adoration for is into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. And really, it's that inheritance that all those other things equal the great mercy of God, given a new birth, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance. And this inheritance is God's gift of salvation. How do you receive this gift of salvation? Well, simply, it's through our faith in God's grace shown through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And how do you know you have this salvation? Because through that salvation, we are given a new birth. Our lives are changed and transformed. We begin to have a response to bear fruit to all that Christ and God have done for us. And part of that is 
as we live in Christian community to become a deeper disciple who is loving God and loving neighbor. And that's what we're doing every day as disciples, centering our lives on loving God and loving neighbor. Therefore, an altogether hope is realizing that we are part of this whole family of Christ through our baptism and that Christ's hope is not just for us, it's for the world. It's the idea that God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. Christ died for your sins. We are justified through our acknowledgement and accepting that and accepting Christ into our life and then responding to it and responding when Christ enters your heart just happens as we draw closer to God within our discipleship. And the best place for that to happen is in Christian community. There's a uniqueness about Christian community. Now understand, when I talk about Christian community, I'm talking about the church, not the building, but the people. And hear this, the church is here for people who are broken, for we are all broken and fall short of the glory of God. We all have brokenness in our life. And guess what? Broken and hurt people sometimes break and hurt others. But in the church, it is a place filled with grace and love, even in those times of brokenness, because it's a place to seek and receive forgiveness. I believe with all my heart that the church is the best representation of God's kingdom to come, even with all its brokenness in the here and now. As we move on to that Christian perfection, that's what unique. You can't often find true forgiveness. You can't often find grace, love, peace, and hope, especially in all together, except through Christ, with God's help, in the church. So friends, my hope for you this week is that if you're seeking out a church community, even if you're watching online, but aren't connected to Jerome, here's an opportunity to connect with us through all the ways that Sarah talks about and we'll talk about here shortly. But also, something special happens when you're in physical church community. And so I encourage you, even if you're watching us online and you live somewhere else in the country, find a small group, find Christian community, find a church so that you too, you too can experience an altogether hope found in the salvation, our faith in God's grace, shown through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is so good to be with you again in worship today. Today we're continuing our new Advent worship series called Almost Christmas, looking at the themes of peace, hope, joy, and love as we continue to prepare our hearts for an all-together Christmas. As we continue in worship together today, I want to invite you again to connect to all of the resources that are in Church Center, which is our online hub for engaging with the ministries of Jerome Church. While you're there, please be sure to check into worship or complete your Connect card today and take some time to explore all of the opportunities that are there in the app, including upcoming events and ways to volunteer in a local mission or to grow deeper in your faith by participating in one of our classes or studies. A few of the ways that you can take a next step with God here at Jerome Church include signing up to participate in our Advent All Church Study called Almost Christmas, which continues through the season of Advent, and you can jump in at any time. You can join our daytime class or sign up to receive information and resources to do the study in your household or with your own small group. We also have a brand new way to participate in the study through our recently launched unpasteurized podcast where we are discussing the themes of peace hope love and joy each week with new episodes released each friday you can search for the unpasteurized podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and also find us on the jerome church youtube channel i also want to invite you to worship with us during this advent and christmas season 
On Thursday, December 21st, we will have our longest night service at 7 p.m. And then on Christmas Eve, we will hold two Advent services in the morning at 9 and 10.30 a.m. And then have four evening Christmas Eve services, including a family and contemporary worship service at 5 p.m. and traditional services at 7 and 9 p.m. And our online worship service right here on these platforms at 7 p.m. You can learn more about all of the upcoming opportunities, including our Christmas worship services and times at Jerome Church, as well as view the calendar and connect to signups through the Church Center app or by visiting our website at jeromechurch.org. The people of Jerome Church are committed to the mission that Jesus gave us to love God and love people. And I want to invite you to join us in this great work by giving your regular financial offering today and also by completing an estimated giving card for 2024 if you've not done so yet. You can connect to the estimated giving card as well as give electronically through the links in today's video description. You can also find it on the Jerome Church website or donate online through the Give tab in the Church Center app. And if you've made the decision to give for the first time today, you can connect to our online giving platform by texting the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. You can also give through automatic withdrawal by contacting the church office or by mailing a check to Jerome Church at the address that's on the screen below. Our hope here is that you will establish a regular pattern of giving so that you can join in the great work that God is doing through the people of Jerome Church. As we end our time of worship together today, I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your week. Whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand, maybe on your way to run errands during this busy season. I want to invite you to connect with us online this week through our social media platforms as well as in the Church Center app. And know that we are looking forward to worshiping with you this next week as we continue to prepare our hearts for Christmas during this blessed season of Advent. Have a wonderful week, friends. Oh,